The following program discusses sensitive issues. Parents are cautioned that some material may be too candid for younger children. Welcome to Pure Choices. I'm Ron Woolsey with Coming Out Ministries, and with me today are my colleagues from Coming Out Ministries, Mike Carducci and Wayne Blakely. We're going to talk about a subject that has a catchy title, I believe, uh, Can Born a Gay Be Born Again? Hmm. The debate continues on this subject uh, as to whether one can be born gay, but, uh, well, let's just talk about that for a second, hmm. because there are so many difference, differences of opinion on this issue. And we'll talk about this, and then we'll talk about later on whether it, it really matters or not. Uh, Mike, what are your thoughts on that, or what have you heard about this? <clears throat> wow, deep, deep question. So for me, early on, I, I thought I was born gay. From my earliest recollection, even at six years old, when, before it was sexualized, I knew that I was different than the other boys. I knew that, that something had happened. And, and so as I grew up, the world was screaming that I was born gay. And I, and I just readily accepted it because I wasn't hearing anyone else say uh, otherwise. So um, I believed that I was born gay. I also now, after I came out of the gay lifestyle, as I began the journey with Jesus Christ, He showed me also through the Word that sin was generational. And so if homosexuality is an abomination and it's sin, adultery, then I had, to, I had to recognize that that also came from, uh, from generations before me. Uh, you know, there's sexual sin on both sides of my, my parents' uh, families for generations. I had a great-grandmother that was a prostitute during the Depression. And so that helped me to recognize that sin was not only generational. And so I believe that, that there was an aspect that I was born gay. And so uh, that helped me in that quest to find out why this happened, how this uh, was created or allowed to happen in me. Because from my earliest uh, recollection, I loved God. I loved Jesus. I wanted to make him happy. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make him proud of who I was. But I couldn't fight this onslaught of emotion and, and unmet needs of my masculinity. And so, yeah, Ron, I, I believe that you can be born from gay. From your earliest memories, mm -hmm. you believe you were born gay. And yes. I know throughout my childhood and teenage years and, well, for many, many years, I felt that I was born gay. Mm. Um, I, because the reason I felt that way was because I couldn't explain it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know why I had the feelings and the confusion and the emotions that I had. And so I just uh, eventually just accepted, maybe I was just born this way, I was born different. So Wayne, uh, how do you uh, see this question? Is it true that some people are born gay while other people are born straight? Hmm. Well, you know, I see gay as a pretty definitive word. And so, you know, when you first hear that uh, uh, as, a, as a Christian or someone who is, you know, not in uh, agreement with homosexual behavior, they're like, nah, nah, that can't happen. That can't be, <laughs> you know. And so, but let's go back. What is gay? We don't find it in the Word of God, right? The, gay, the word term gay is not there. And so w what actually is gay? You know, it, it is be having same-sex attraction. So I'd go back again to, to my prenatal influence in that my natural mother was adamant that she was not having a boy. <laughs> she was definitely going to have a girl. And if she did have a boy, she was going to reject that boy. And so my prenatal influence and my postnatal conditioning pretty well says that I was born into an environment that what I was going to respond to was going to be the conditioning um, of being drawn to the masculine figure rather than the feminine figure. And if we look at, at Satan's plan versus God's plan um, and God's allowing uh, the stain of sin to be on all of us, yeah, you bet, I think you can be born gay. And my, the question I have in response is, so what? 
You know, so if I can be born gay, so what? We'll Are you cover saying that, that question a little oh, yeah. bit okay. later? Oh yeah, because right. that is a very good question. But I want to just build on this sure. one a little bit right. more yeah. because, as you felt that you were born gay, there were prenatal influences. Mm -hmm. So that sounds environmental, mm -hmm. right? Doesn't it sound like um, that maybe you were being conditioned? by environment, by circumstances, by the feelings and thoughts and emotions and words of your mother. Because I know in, in third, the third trimester of pregnancy, right. I, have, I have heard that, uh, that the babies, uh, they respond to that communication. They right. respond to, the, to soothing music and a loving, warm environment and parents talking to the children. Yeah. Uh, I've seen these beautiful pictures of daddies talking to baby through mommy's tummy and so that when baby is born baby already recognizes and actually they have shown that when the daddy speaks to a baby after it's born they have shown and seen recognition that baby recognizes daddy's voice as well as mommy's voice so uh, is this what I'm hearing that conditioning was taking mm -hmm. place. Well, trauma yeah. can even influence and trauma, a baby yes. in the third trimester. Right. Ministry of Healing supports that right. in the chapter on, on, on mothers. Yes, and so uh, in your case, Wayne, you, you are being conditioned. Yeah, right? I believe that they're strongly conditioned. Um, I think we have that to look at, and I think that we can also look in biblically um, at verses that will tell us that uh, we have the sins of, of our, uh, our ancestors upon us as well. Mm -hmm. So that can be a conditioning as well. I've heard some research in, um, in this area about that third trimester. I want to just play on this just a little bit more here. It has to do with rejection. And, and this is your story, mm -hmm. that, that babies can be born with a sense of rejection mm -hmm. because of the mother maybe feeling rejected or feeling fat and ugly while she's pregnant or being uh, put down by her husband, or being in depression, all kinds of factors that babies can actually be born with a sense of rejection and can struggle with that through many years of their lives until they come to terms with that. And some of these babies grow into children that are seeking acceptance in many different ways. Mm. So children with the same sense of rejection can go in any number of ways seeking that uh, acceptance and some go to the homosexual side, some go to promiscuity, sure. heterosexual, then there's drugs, alcohol, all kinds of things. Uh, so that, um, that third trimester especially is very important and that conditioning does happen. Now, there's another statement that I've heard out there, which to me sounds like a myth, but correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I'm hosting the program, but that doesn't mean I have all the answers. That's why I'm asking the questions. <laughs> if you get the questions wrong, answer wrong, then I'll correct you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, once gay, always gay. Have you ever heard that, Mike? Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Once gay, always gay. You know, it sounds to me like some other myths uh, in doctrine, like once saved, always <laughs> saved. Uh, and in that, for example, in that belief, it to me eliminates the power of choice. If once saved, always saved, then, then you lose your power of choice when you're converted. Mm. So do you lose your power of choice if you're gay? Once gay, always gay. Mike, what, what do you think about that? Ron, that's such a, um, a heavy for me because if that was true, when I was converted and, and following Jesus, I didn't want to be straight. I wasn't even interested. I, I was desperately looking to uh, affirm the identity that I'd that it cultivated and that I felt that I was born into. You know, the flesh wants to stay that way. And so as I was looking for, for ways to keep my boyfriend and to keep my, my identity, what was amazing is that um, I realized that God was calling it an abomination. And, and because I, I was finally experiencing His love for me, I, then I got angry with God and I, and I shook my little fist at Him and said, how dare you say that I'm an abomination if you made me gay because mm -hmm. I had bought into that, that lie that, that I was born gay or, or maybe not lie, but, but to think that Jesus was impotent, that he couldn't help me out of that. So how dare a God create someone gay and then mm -hmm. turn around and call them an abomination? And so that was when I started realizing that if he called it an abomination and if I couldn't get out of it, then he wasn't a savior at all. And, and he's either a savior for everyone 
or he's a savior for no one. Right. And, and I was at the bridge of actually letting go of my salvation or, or even my pursuit of God because that was so offensive to me that after all the rejection that I'd gotten from men in my whole life, that now my savior was saying that I was rejected if he made me that way. But God was so good because he began to to bathe over me, understanding that this may have been what, what sin had caused in my life, but he wasn't going to leave me there. And, and that was powerful. Well, you know, this dilemma that is created by that thinking is one thing that left me so bitter and angry against mm. God. Were you ever bitter and angry against God? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> Not a little. Not you, Wayne. <laughs> Just a little. You know, when I was in the world, I went into the world bitter and angry against God for yes. these reasons we're talking about here because I had no answers. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had a degree in theology before mm. I went into the gay world. Mm. Shame on me, right? You'd think I had all the answers. No, I had a lot of Bible knowledge, but I didn't have my answers. And so... Um, to read, to have all this knowledge about how God feels about uh, homosexual behavior, mm. uh, the condemnation for that behavior, the, the destruction of the wicked, and then be trapped in this body, in this mindset that that's who I was. I had that same dilemma. Mm. If God made me this way, if I was born this way, and there are no answers, then it's God's fault. That's right. And if it's God's fault, shame on him. Can you, can you see how Satan uses that to turn victims mm -hmm. into enemies of God? And mm -hmm. is there not a lot of hatred against God within the gay community? I think it's reasonable. It's only mm -hmm. fair. If, you, if you've been fed the lie and learned the lie, you know, it makes sense then. I believe that even God recognizes that, that some of that is reasonable. He says, come and let us reason together. So, so when I started getting real with God and I started getting angry, I believe God was, was saying, yes, Mike, let some of that out because as you open up and start being real with me, then I can start being real with you and to show you that that isn't who I am. You know, isn't it wonderful that God's shoulders are so big? Yes. He can take our anger. <laughs> Yes. Understanding that we don't understand. Yes. It's almost like, go ahead, lash out at me. Just talk to me. Yeah. If you need to vent, vent to me. If you feel angry and bitter against me, let it out and get it out of your system. And then I will, then I'll get your attention and I'll show you that yeah. you don't need to be that way anymore. And we can resolve this anger issue that is mm. going on here. Well, even if a little child says they hate their parent, it doesn't cause the parent not to love the child anymore. They right. know that they're responding to, you know, feelings or whatever, and they know that this is a temporary thing, but at least the child is being real. Now, here's another um, term that I've heard so much. In fact, I used it. Mm. These terms that, I, that I've heard so much about, guess where I heard them? <laughs> from <yourself>. myself <laughs> all those years in the world I was saying these uh -huh. things homosexuality is an acceptable alternative lifestyle Wayne did you ever say that did you ever think that uh, you know Have you I ever came, heard that <clears throat> yes and I came to a point um, uh, it was when I began to get settled in my gay identity that I found that th that this was what was natural to me and when I went and lived in um, Key West, Florida for two years mm. and came back, um, my nephews began to say to me, wow, we have never heard you uh, be so adamant and so blatant mm -hmm. about your identity as you are today. And I had gone and immersed myself in um, a gay culture where I had just lived and breathed uh, men day in and day out and in, uh, an intemperate life. Um, it, we, obviously, you can tell, you know, who was controlling that. Isn't that kind of like drinking the Kool-Aid or, mm -hmm. or, or drinking the alcohol? It's numbing yes. the conscience <laughs> and, and numbing the argument and uh, drowning oneself mm -hmm. or covering mm -hmm. oneself. It's self-justification. Right. Yeah. You know, the, the, beauty, uh, the beauty that I see in this as we talk about this is that, you know, we went in so many different directions that were not uh, directions that God intended us to go. Yeah. But praise God, He knows the beginning from the end. Yes. And so He saw the whole story. 
he knew that we um, in our individual lives would need to experience certain things. He would need to allow us to go down certain roads in order for us to totally get it. And when we got it, we would come back and we would be strong and powerful in Jesus Christ um, because now we know, um, we know the difference between darkness and light. And we know that Jesus remains the same because he's the same yesterday, today, and Amen. tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Okay, Mike, I have this question for you. If if homosexuality is an acceptable, well, I should say is, based upon our discussion and our study and our experience, is homosexuality really an acceptable alternative lifestyle or is it a sin issue? If it's an acceptable, acceptable uh, lifestyle choice, then it makes Jesus Christ impotent. And that mm -hmm. was the bottom line for me. Because yes. if, if Jesus called it an abomination and he couldn't reach it or restore it, then that makes him impotent. And so whether we're in church culture or secular society, if we accept that to be a truth, then Jesus Christ was no savior. He was mm. nothing more than just a mortal man. So if this is a sin issue, is that what you're saying? Yes, absolutely. If it is a sin issue, then is there a remedy? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, you know, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right there lets us know that, uh, you know, even before uh, we were uh, able to accept the gift or even willing to accept the gift, it was already provided. The plan of salvation uh, was put into place even before we were born. Uh, before the earth was formed, He knew us and He knew the struggle that I was going to have. You know, I was so angry at Him as I started coming back. And I said, you know, why, Lord, out of all the, the things in this world that you would give me homosexuality or allow this thing to come to me and I was angry there for a long time that I had to learn how to surrender my flesh not just every day but each and every minute and then I started to recognize the beauty of God's grace because I started to learn that I didn't have the the uh, the luxury of just surrendering myself over it at one time during the day that I had to learn the quality of breathing Jesus like air and surrendering every five minutes and now I see the beauty that I've learned that I have to hang on to Jesus Christ constantly. Mm. I had to learn that, that thing in the Bible that says, uh, pray without ceasing. Could it be, and this is just coming to me as we we're talking and I'm listening to you here, could it be that God allowed us to go this route mm. because He knew what we could become? In other words, mm. in Jeremiah we read, before I formed you in the belly, yeah. I knew you. That's an intimacy. And I, and I have often thought, you know, I could have been a miscarriage. God knew what I yes. would become. Yeah. He knew how degraded I would be, <clears throat> that I would go into the world with a degree in theology and bring such terrible reproach against His name. Why did He allow me to even be born? Mm. I could have been a miscarriage. I could have been an abortion. But He said, I knew you. What? I guess He knew what we could become yeah. if we went through, in other words, it seems to me this is something that he allowed to flop down on our plate yes. because he knew that we could overcome and what we could do with that challenge and how it could be exactly. a blessing to others later. Right. You know, well, <clears throat> I have to believe that, that we were chosen. And I have said um, on, the, on the phone to Mike before um, <clears throat> more than once, um, how many people do you know in our denomination, our individual, individual denomination um, that are standing up with this message? Um, this message that hasn't been talked about, about redemption from homosexuality for 150 years of our, in our denomination. And, and Mike's like, I, I don't know anyone. <laughs> and I said, Can, does that tell you what Jesus Christ has seen in us? That he knew that he would have a voice through us, that we are chosen, that he has put a special blessing on us <clears throat> to be able to go forth and share what the transformation is, what is possible through Jesus Christ, because he knew that through what we were allowed to go through, that we would come through the end and that we would believe in him and that we would trust in him and we would not, we don't flinch in, in the sight of society today. We, we fear not because God is with us. You know, the, yeah. the, Jesus is the one that's on trial here, not yes. us. Because Jesus is the one that the whole world, the whole universe is looking at to see if he's just and if he's the savior that he says he is. And so he wants to reproduce in his people his same character. And what 
testifies more of God's goodness than to be able to take three loser people who are absolutely <laughs> trapped in homosexuality and pull them out of the gutter, restore in them his beautiful character, and then set apart through the time of trouble to the time that he comes to take us home and say, this is the power of Jesus Christ. Yeah. This is his uh, redemption. Three losers. That's you and Wayne and who else? <laughs> <laughs> Are you? Well, Ron, there's more than three. There's yeah. hundreds. There's <laughs> thousands out there that don't testify, but they've experienced the same renewing from Jesus Christ. All right. This leads me to a question. If homosexuality um, is condemned in the Bible as an abomination yeah. or a sin issue, then Wayne, because I know you're dying to answer this question, <laughs> does it really matter how we ended up that way in the first place? What is it that really matters? How we got there or how we get out of it? Mm. Well, you know, what really truly matters is, is our decision, our daily and moment, moment by decision um, with Jesus Christ. And, you know, he convicted my heart. Once that conviction took place, uh, I know that I belong to him. And so, I, you know, as soon as that conviction took place, I began to, to see that um, there were truths that hadn't been um, uncovered. I, I developed a passion to want to go out and say to our church leaders, our pastors, um, I know what it is now. I know what it is. I know the answer to um, being able to come out of that gay life and return to a life in Jesus Christ. And all along, I thought it had been this deep, dark secret. And what it was, was developing this intimacy with Jesus Christ. And little did I know that God was going to turn around and take that um, and put us in positions that we could speak to churches and congregations and leadership today and have them come to us afterwards and say, you know what, that wasn't really about homosexuality. That really is about any kind of sin temptation. That is really mm -hmm. about involving people in getting to know Jesus Christ in their own personal relation. Not mm -hmm. so much the, the relationship always that's going this way, but Definitely, the, the relationship is, it, it, that is going this way because in the end, it, it is us before God and our maker and, and where he is saying, you know, what was your decision? You know? See, we are all a part of that theater of grace, aren't we? Yes. We are being used in a way along with any other sinner out there that is being drawn to Christ and, and living a new life in Christ we too are being used to demonstrate mm. the power of God That's right. to save his people mm. from their sins. Mm. It is a way of, of helping to vindicate God's character because he's accused before the universe of being that impotent God that can maybe save this person and that person, but certainly not Mike mm. or Wayne or, or Ron. <laughs> so we're part <laughs> of that theater of grace. Ron, and Ron so, will you tell yes. the story of the, of the guy that's, you know, in the river drowning? Yes, I was just going oh, to go there favorite. because, yeah. um, you know, if a person is drowning in the sea, does it really matter why? You know, the lifeguard comes out in the boat and he comes up to the person glub glubbing in the sea and says, how did you get out here? <laughs> did you fall in? <laughs> did you get caught in a riptide? Were you pushed? Did you fall off a boat? Did you get pushed in? I did that to my brother once. Um, <laughs> you know, what, how'd you get here? And we laugh at that. Of course not. Mm -hmm. What does the lifeguard do? He, he extends the saving hand. Isn't Jesus Amen. like that? Amen. And so to those who feel that they are born gay, doesn't Jesus just say, well, I have an answer. If you're going to blame your heredity on the choices that you are making to stay in this condition, I have a solution. Mm -hmm. Be what? Be if born you think, again. There you go. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Then be born again. Amen. And if you're born again, now you have God for your father. You're a partaker of divine nature. Mm -hmm. That's right. And now who are you going to blame? Yeah. See? And I, I think that's a, a beautiful thing that he, Jesus just has an answer for every objection. I have found as I listen to certain objections to the salvation for the homosexual, I have found answers from God himself for every single argument out there. Um, there comes up a question. I read an article once that was uh, based upon a question that is homosexuality a sexual orientation mm. 
or is it a sexual preference? Mm. Uh, and you, <clears throat> Wayne, are you a taker on that one? I would love to address that. You know, I, I, I would uh, like to say that, you know, God gave sex as a gift um, of intimacy between Adam and Eve. It was never meant to be an identity or, or an orientation. Orientation came about by uh, the counterfeit, you know, by, by the enemy taking this thing and saying that sex is our identity. Um, and it even at one point was looked at as homosexuality as being a mental illness. Um, and then the psychology, not the Bible, turned around and said, oh, no, 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 it's not a disturbance. It's not an, a, a, an illness, uh, but it's actually an orientation. That came about in our, in our culture. That's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You look and you read throughout the Bible, there are two orientations. Either you're oriented to Jesus and the cross or you're oriented to the world. Very good. Mm. Uh, Mike? <clears throat> you know, uh, I didn't even understand the nuances of that, but I knew that if Jesus said that that I wasn't allowed to have it, I for me it had to be very simple. It, he either had the answer or he didn't. And as I followed him, I didn't have to choose to be straight. I just chose Jesus Christ, and He was the one that brought those feelings in and took out the old feelings that weren't acceptable. Very good. So I think we could summarize here that uh, you know we've talked about being. <clears throat> excuse me, being born gay, mm -hmm. uh, being born straight, and uh, the acceptable alternative lifestyle, um, and that it, it really doesn't matter. Because, you know, as I search through the Bible, I don't really find Jesus interrogating people as to why they are whatever sinner they are. He knows. Just to marry, I yeah. don't condemn you, yeah. and I'm not going to ask you why you're doing this. Mm -hmm. Sin is a mystery, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, can it be explained? Can it really be excused? No. He offers the solution. And so I just love that thought when we think we are born gay or born this way, that Jesus simply says, well, let's just, why don't you just be born again? Let's start over. Start over with a clean slate. Mm, wash away the past. That's right. Yeah. And then to, the, to answer that question, is homosexuality a sexual preference or a sexual orientation. The very word orientation in the dictionary indicates there's choice mm. involved. And if there's choice involved, there's also the word in the dictionary for reorientation, which is certainly about choice and being redirected. And so we come to the question, if we look at it carefully, is it a sexual orientation or a sexual preference? I would say in light of the gospel, if you know there's a way out and that God says be born again, then it becomes a choice, doesn't it? Where you may have thought it was your orientation and you're locked in all of your life. In the end, it does come down to a choice, a preference. In the light of the gospel, homosexuality would be a sexual preference. Mm. We thank you for tuning in to uh, Pure Choices today and hope that you will continue making those pure choices in your daily walk.